Hey friends, hope you are enjoying Testflix 2022. Kudos to the Test Drive community for organizing this wonderful conference for the third time. This Testflix, I want to talk about a very interesting topic that is systems thinking for testers. As testers, we deal with complexity day in and day out and systems thinking is a wonderful sense of simplification that helps us be better at observing, learning and interacting with complex and unknown systems. So before I talk more about systems thinking, I want to take a moment to quickly introduce myself. Hi, I'm Rahul Parwal. I'm a senior software engineer working with IFM Engineering in India. I'm a software tester who loves to dive deep into the nuances and intricacies of software testing. I first got to know about systems thinking from the famous book Introduction to General Systems Thinking by Jerry Weinberg. And from then I learned and studied systems thinking in depth and I want to share my understanding on systems thinking and how systems thinking can help testers. But first I would start with the definition of a system. So a system is definitely not a new word. We all use it in our day to day context and terminologies, but I will quickly introduce system with the famous definition by Dr. Russell Aikoff, who defines a system as not just some parts of its constituent, but the product of interaction between each of its part. So a system is basically an indivisible whole, which means that if you take away any component out of your system, the system doesn't remain the same. And we are surrounded by systems all across us. If we take an example of a car, a car is composed of some core components which interact together to behave as a car. But if you take away any of its essential component, then what you get is not a car, but it's just a mechanical object that cannot move. So it's the interaction of the components that make the car what it is. And so similarly, we are filled with a lot of systems around us, be it our computer, be it our human body, be it the machines around us, these are all systems that work with the uh, cooperation and interaction of the different components that uh, create and define it. So to understand the effects and behavior of any system, we have to use a holistic thought process. And this holistic thought process is actually known as systems thinking. So in the complex tech world of which we all are a part right now, good systems thinking is indeed a panacea for success. So I would now talk about the repeated failures that we see in the testing space. So you all would have seen such kind of regression effects when one bug gets fixed and then other bugs comes back on front and then that bug gets closed and some other bug gets opened and so on and so forth. And all this happens and all these side effects or uh, testing timelines that uh, get affected or uh, the production bugs that keep on coming or the low in sprint automation despite setting any number of goals I mean teams not able to achieve that uh, desired levels and so on and so forth I mean not not even able to get the coverage so all these issues come because we are actually not alone we are part of a bigger system and we have to understand this entire system in order to work with it. So in a system, all of the elements that are part of it, be it the development team, be it the production team, be it the business team, all of these elements actually influence each other and have a direct relation with each other. So if we apply just a linear thinking or even we decide on a linear goals, that will not help if we are part of a system. So if we are a part of a system, I mean, the system influences the behavior of the, of the uh, different things, different components. And it's important that we look for the variables that impact our system. And we try, can identify the relationship between those variables. We try to identify the boundaries of our variables and how they interact with each other. Similarly, it's also important to focus on the interaction of all these variables or components because the parts are not alone and the parts influence the system. If 
we talk about any typical software project which has specific roles for development, testing, business, which are all part of one team and we apply systems thinking to it. Then the system or the output of the software project system is not the sum of each of the component, but it would be the sum product of the interaction of individual components. And that's why interaction, collaboration, having a shared understanding of the problem statement matters a lot. So now let's talk about some of the tips to get started with systems thinking. The first being look beyond the symptoms. So I've often seen people stopping at the symptom layer. We got a bug in the production. Maybe it's the tester's fault, but it's important to see what's going on underneath. It's important to recognize the patterns, structures, mental models to get to a good conclusion. So look for the hidden layers of abstraction. Don't just restrict yourself to the top layer. Second is 5W1H, which is ask questions, ask questions about who, what, when, where, why, how, and understand the context better. If you want, also you can use questioning tools. There are toolkits that are available that are, uh, that can help you reveal your context more clearly, understand more about questioning. Questioning is a powerful skill for testers. Next is visualization. For any complex situation or scenarios, visualization helps a lot. You can visualize information using mind maps, sketch notes, flow charts, brace map, fishbone diagrams. And there are a lot of possibilities. You can color code things. You can map out dependencies and see how things are flowing through. So that's important. Next is considering trade-offs. So a lot of times when people make decisions, people use their judgment, they avoid the trade-offs that they are unconsciously making. So for example, I mean, there, there are different contexts and different kind of trade-offs that you can see. And if somebody wants more of one, for example, if, if you want uh, the cost to be reduced, then what are you ready to trade off? Is it the quality? Is it the time? So what is the trade-off that we are making? It's very important that we are, be aware of such trade-offs. And maybe we are making trade-off in the day-to-day -day decisions also. For example, the number of automated tests versus the quality of script. So where, what is our focus? I mean, is the focus on the number, the count, or following some kind of a best practice rather than thinking of our context? So whenever you choose something, it's always important that to consider that what are we actually trading off when we are considering this aspect. So in the end, the only thing that I want to talk is that instead of using traditional thinking, it's important that we think of the variables that might be affecting our system in our context and use systems thinking, try to identify variables, try to question things, try to visualize things and know better approach problems better think better and uh, there are tools that are also available that can help you be better at systems thinking uh, that are available at untools.co so you can check out uh, the tools under systems thinking categories there are different tools for thinking and how you can uh, think more uh, on the lines of systems thinking so that was all from my side. Thanks for listening in. If you have any question, feel free to ask me on Twitter or on the chat. Thank you. And in the end, I want to give credits to my reviewers, Somya, Vijay, Mahati. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.